Today's hearing is entitled Digital Dollar Dilemma, the Implications of a Central Bank Digital Currency and Private Sector Alternatives. We're here to better understand what central bank digital currencies are and the concept of digital money to compare CBDCs to privately issued payment stable coins and how design choices would impact areas like consumer privacy, banks of all sizes, and monetary policy. I'd like to, for members to hear from our witnesses today not only about uh, communist China's proposed digital yuan, but what steps the United Kingdom and the European Union have taken and why. So far, the conversation is focused on the Federal Reserve's legal authority to issue a CBDC. Look, the Constitution is clear. Only Congress has the authority to coin money and regulate the value of such money. And we've heard the same from Fed officials right before this committee, and most recently from Vice Chair for Supervision Michael Barr, who last week told an audience in Philadelphia, and I quote, the Federal Reserve would only proceed with the issuance of a CBDC with clear support from the executive branch and authorizing legislation from Congress. The Biden Department of Justice agrees, saying, quote, there would be substantial legal risk to issuing a CBDC without such legislation. So let me be unequivocally clear here for this audience. There is no support for a CBDC in Congress, except from those on the fringes who think somehow a CBDC might be an amazing solution to many unstated global problems. Several members, Mr. Emmer, Mr. Mooney, Mr. Auchincloss, and I have introduced bills stating that the Federal Reserve does not have the authority to issue a U.S. CBDC. I particularly want to say thank you to Mr. Auchincloss, Mr. Torres, and Mr. Nickel for their work on our bill and demonstrating that this isn't a controversial or partisan point of view. Let me be clear. While a retail Federal Reserve issued CBDC is not in the cards, there are many significant areas for improvement in our U.S. payment system. We need less complaining and more facts in progress. Payments can be modernized by modifying the existing system infrastructure through innovations led by the private sector. Some modifications have yet to be implemented, like expanding the days and hours of the Fed wholesale payment services, like the National Settlement Service or Fedwire. These developments would provide for instant payments for individuals and businesses through their financial institution. It's not okay that the Fed still hasn't finished this work even a decade later with no clear timetable for its completion. However, other improvements are already underway. The RTP network has been around since 2017, while the FedNow service was recently launched in July. Turning to innovations in blockchain payment rails, our committee marked up Clarity for Payment Stablecoin Act in our committee during July, which establishes a federal regime for payment stablecoins with strict reserve and capital requirements, disclosures, and attestations to protect consumers. I want this hearing to explore whether a U.S. CBDC is the most efficient and effective means to address payment inefficiencies, or if in fact private sector alternatives and improvements to our existing payment system and infrastructure can better provide more immediate solutions. I look forward to hearing our witnesses' perspectives. I thank all my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for their dedication to thoughtfully explore this issue. Working together, we can modernize the U.S. payment system.